Unnamed started as something completely different from what it evolved into. When we started recording, Bert and I had been doing shows together for a few years, and we really just thought we'd try to capture the material that we'd been playing live. When did I first meet Tom? I actually don't remember. <laughs> Back in 2001, a venue called The Coach House in Orange County asked my group, Agent 22, to open for Bert's group, the California Guitar Trio. And I remember the show pretty well because I was very excited to do it. I'd heard the trio before a little bit, and loved what they were doing musically. And at the end of the night, I can remember having a chance to talk to Bert, and we got into talking about songwriting a little bit. And I remember him mentioning he really liked a piece of mind called Waking the Day. And that was the start of things. We kept in touch, and not too long after that, the trio asked me to go on the road with them as an opener, which was a great experience. And over the next few years, I think we did about 80 shows together all over the US. During that tour, I ended up sitting in with Tom on, on, the, on one of the pieces, and one piece first, and more than one, two pieces, and then let, we had the idea of combining both our solo projects. But soon after we started playing, we started working on original music already, and also some arrangements of the trio just to kind of gather a repertoire to have of music together, because I felt, we both felt that uh, our Playing as a duo was a lot stronger than uh, us trading pieces and as a set in the set it was much more powerful when we played together. We started doing some recording in June of 2008, but we also did one show at the Museum of Making Music in Carlsbad, California. And the staff there recorded the show, and when we listened back to the recording we thought, well, okay, first this was a, a good performance, but second, this was kind of already what we were aiming for with the studio album. So. It became obvious that at that point that the studio album should be something else, and we put out a live album. As we got going more and more, we kind of set different priorities too for the CD. It became a little bit of a different project. Rather than just having a CD with music together, it became let's make a CD with original music together. So we had to become more creative and uh, write music together as we were recording. One thought I had was to do some improvisations and very often our recording sessions would involve setting up all the equipment, just hitting record and then playing whatever we felt like playing and come back later, maybe say in the evening and listen back to what had happened and start picking out little moments that we liked. And it could be anything. It could be a little melodic idea or maybe a little chord progression or a rhythmic idea but we would start kind of extrapolating these little bits and then started trying to work them together into more finished pieces. Everything had to come from just the two of us, so if we wanted sort of a driving rhythm, one of us had to be sort of the rhythm section. The studio recording with Tom has been more about writing the pieces and taking them to their best possible form and playing. A big part of putting the album together at that point was actually playing live and we had several tours from 2008 to 2011 where we would be taking these new pieces out and almost on any given tour we might have one or two pieces that were sort of the focal point for us and every night at the show we might be playing it at soundcheck as you know a piece for soundcheck but we'd also be kind of looking at it and going well okay, hang on, what if we take this section and put it over here and maybe make this section shorter or longer? Or what if you play that melody? Um, which was fun and kind of kept us on our toes because then we would play it in the show that night and have to remember whatever changes we just made to the thing. But it really was a great way to kind of play in the material and get comfortable with it before recording it properly. This is our new piece. It's still new to us pretty much every time we play it because we keep changing it, keep trying slightly new things. But for today, there's a little something like this.
the fall of 2011, I made two separate one-week trips up to Portland to work on mixes for the album with our friend Howard Givens. He's a great person to work with for this sort of unusual style of music that we do. And it was while I was up there working with Howard that I told him an idea I had for a story with one of the pieces that we call the Prairie Suite. And at the time, most of the pieces were living with these sort of quirky working titles that would just be sort of a reminder of what was happening in the piece. But with the Prairie Suite, when I was working on it myself at home, I had this very clear image of a story kind of come to me from out of nowhere, really. And I was sort of relaying this whole long three-part story to Howard, and he really was inspired by the idea I had and kind of encouraged me to take it farther from there and, and to sort of try to blossom out the story from being just this one long piece to the entire album. But that was the start of things. So while Howard would kind of be doing his passes on mixes, I'd be kind of starting to sketch little story ideas and researching online and things. And the idea of this being one large story really took off from there. The artwork for this project was all done by a company out of Belgium called Milk Graphic Design, which is run by two twin brothers, Jack and Laurent. And Bert and I had each worked with them separately in the past. They had done the Whitewater album for the Guitar Trio, as well as the cover for my album with Jerry Murata, and actually the Agent 22 re-release as well. And if you were to look at those three albums, you might get the sense that there are some very different sort of artistic styles happening. And we took advantage of it, because on this project we came up with the idea that the package should look sort of like a diary, as if it was written by somebody on this trip. And so throughout the booklet you have the stories, but also some illustrations, as if this traveler was sort of making sketches of some things on the journey that had really stood out to them. And it was really nice to be able to work with them and have this skill set that could handle making artwork in sort of an old-fashioned style and even its sort of aged paper look, but also be able to lay it out professionally in such a way that it works for a modern CD. Unnamed Lands was the very definition of a labor of love, but something just kept driving us to always try to make it a little better or push ourselves a little further. And in the four year period we worked on it, we actually recorded something like 30 hours of material, which when you take that much music and then sort of sift it down to the 47 minutes that's on the album, to me the end result is very strong from beginning to end. And there's something about every single track on this album that I'm very proud of. I think it will appeal to a very different crowds and I think it will also be inclusive because there is some more traditional sounding pieces on there like say an Irish sounding tune like Rebecca and then there's way out there experimental electric electronic stuff uh, or strange improvs like the insect piece. It's also quite gratifying now as it's starting to make its way out into the world to see some of the early reviews come in which have all been very favorable and it's been fun to start touring with more of the material as well. And we had a chance recently to take a trip through the Southwest. And as I'd be relaying some of the stories that went with the music each night, we actually had people come up after the shows saying things like, you just told my great grandfather's story. He was on one of those wagon trains. So as much effort as it was to put this project together, it's incredibly rewarding now to see that it's resonating with people the same way it did with us while we were making it.